It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Bo, this next one, number three. Mm -hmm. This one's a little different because I feel like the other two that we've talked about, whether it was talking about trading cards or even the tulips of the the 1600s, that was greed driving that to a lot, you know, in a lot of ways. The next one I want to talk about is really driven more by fear, the other side of the emotion, and that's gold. Yep. This is one that people, uh, you hear about this often, but the times that you hear about it generally tend to be the times when things don't feel as great or when there's a lot of uncertainty or when there's a lot of scariness present out there. That's when you tend to hear people say, oh, well, you got to get on this bandwagon. This is when you got to go buy it up. This is when you have to be a gold investor. And again, I, I don't know that that is necessarily the most prudent investment strategy. Now, given some historical context to this, because we're really talking about the the period from the 70s to the 80s, Mm -hmm. 1971 is when President Nixon took us off the gold standard. Yep. Um, You know, we're not going to get into all the economics of sure. that, but that's that's There's just a significant a, a, thing that a happened. A big moment in time because gold was trading at about thirty five dollars an ounce back then, and then a lot of people don't realize that actually, uh, as Americans, owning or holding or having gold in your household wasn't considered necessarily a legal thing until mm-hmm. nineteen seventy four. Sure. After FDR, they kind of didn't want you hoarding gold because that was going to be for the government. Yep. Um, it became completely legal after 1974. And I think that's what, when you look at a pricing of our historical chart of gold, you'll see that's when we're off to the races with gold valuations. And we went from $35 an ounce in 1971 to $850 per ounce in 1980. I mean, that is a very, very rapid run up in the price of gold. And there were a lot of things, like you said, that were driving that. There were some big macroeconomic factors, but there's also a lot of economic uncertainty, and there was some oil stuff going on. There were all kinds of things that had people thinking, you know what, this is going to be the thing where I'm going to have a store of value, and I'm going to go buy gold, and it's going to be the thing that's going to allow me to preserve and grow my wealth through time. But as we look back at history and we look at the rest of the story, that wasn't exactly the case. Yeah, I mean, this is, look, because we hear going from $35 to 850 that's a huge rate of return. Yep. And if you're one of those people, congratulations. But if, I think if you're trying to learn, be a student of history and you're looking at this and you go, okay, well, I see on your chart that, okay, you guys are talking about the 80s. It looks like it's gone way up since then. Mm-hmm. I want to go ahead and tell you the rest of the story. We went from $850 to, in 1980. Yep. To where now, as of the day we're recording this, it's around seventeen hundred dollars an ounce. And you start thinking, oh well, that that doesn't sound too bad. I was at eight hundred, and now I'm at seventeen hundred. I guess that I've done okay if I were a gold investor that started even at the peak back in the 1980s. But you'd have missed out on a lot of opportunity because mm-hmm. we still go back with gold. Is that yes, it's pretty to look at. Yes, it has some value, I guess, in dentistry or jewelry and those type of things. But at the end of the day, it's not generating income for you. It's You're going to have to pay somebody to keep it safe. There's a lot of things working against it, whereas if you're buying into like the S&P 500 Mm -hmm. or just generalized investing, you're getting dividends, you're getting innovation, you're getting something that's growing in the background. And that's why we saw in the 90s, you know, why gold was sitting flat. I mean, think about this. We went 25 years where this thing got crushed it didn't move and then just yep. sat pretty much down at the bottom while you had all these things going on in the 80s and 90s with investments where you're making between 10 to 17% yep. per year. There's a lot of opportunity cost in jumping in on this bandwagon with everybody else that might not serve you well in the long term with the lion's share of your investments. Again, I think if you're someone trying to figure out how you're going to deploy your army of dollar bills and where you're going to put that, you have to get back to the fundamentals. What is the reason that I'm buying this thing? Or what's the reason I'm investing in this thing? Am I someone who's going to be a stock market investor because I believe innovation is going to increase and we're going to continue to expand the pizza pie? Or do I want to be someone who buys something that has a perceived value now that the only way it becomes more valuable is if the person that comes behind me is willing to pay more for it. 